very strong. Brother Swagat is very strong in his condemnation, and I am with him. Pornography, any type, whether in written form, whether in pictures or in films, it's a horrible thing. In his book, Brother Swagat gives you his research, his study. Number one, he says, when you read or you see these things, it acts like a drug, like, like marijuana or opium or heroin or alcohol, it acts like a drug. You see these things, it's a chemical action takes place. And I agree with Brother Swagat. Chemical actions takes place. You know? So you read about ins with pornography. Pornography. Your mind is getting used to that. Escalation takes place. Desensitization takes place. These are his terms. I, I, these are the fir first time I'm learning these terms. And you must then play the role, act out the role. This is how this sickness, this disease overpowers man strong in his condemnation. He is closest to my government in South Africa because if I take any of some of the magazines that I can buy at Kennedy Airport or at Heathrow, anywhere, if I take it into my country, I go to jail for two years. That's how good. That's my country, South Africa. You know, it has its, you know, this, the other side of the picture. But as far as religion goes, as far as religiosity goes, they are very, very staunch Christians. But that country of mine banned portions of the Bible. There was a pamphlet in circulation with extracts, nine extracts from the Holy Bible. And somebody sent it to the censorship board. Said, look at this. What is this? So they made a decree that this pamphlet is banned, not knowing that these are words from the Holy Bible. These were extracts from the Holy Bible, from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 23. I dare any preacher read it to read it to his congregation. I dare any evangelist to read it to his mother, his sister, his daughter, or even to his fiancée if she's a good woman. Ezekiel, chapter 23. The whoredoms of those two sisters, Ahola and Aholiba. The language, the language, so it. My government banned it, and there were two ministers of the church on the board when they banned it. But they didn't know they were banning extracts from the Holy Bible. My government is so staunch that they had banned Lady Chatterley's Lover. It's a novel, Lady Chatterley's Lover. It had one offensive word, four-letter word, one word for which they banned it for 20 years. But now they've grown big, they're mature now, they have allowed it. You know, they have desensed it, they have withdrawn that... Uh, that order against the book. But nine extracts from the Holy Bible. Say, the book of God, which you are ashamed to read to your audience, I dare my brother, I dare him to read this pamphlet. I have it here ready. He doesn't have to even open the book. Here, all those wordings in red, I said, look, with your usual, your usual charismatic language, with the usual actions, I would love to see Brother Swagat. I, I, I feel ashamed to bribe him. I said, look, Brother Swagat, if you can read it to the audience, I give you $100. What is $100 to Brother Swagat? <laughs> when I'm reading in his book on Roman Catholicism, that he needs $291,000 a day to keep his head above water. I calculated 106 million a year just to keep above water. And in the evangelist of December 85, he's aspiring, I wish him luck, he's aspiring for $1 million a day. He needs, he says, $1 million a day. I said, good luck to him. But now, <laughs> if I said I give you a thousand, brother sir, God, I give you a thousand. You know, I can't tempt him, I know. But in his usual spirited way, I hope and I pray that he has the courage, the guts, which all the priests in my experience have not had. Read it. Read it to your audience. Ezekiel chapter 23. If you can't, and I'm, I can tell you that it is not the word of God. The Bible is not the word of God. Yes, as some mention men, men, uh, was made. It was from my book, Is the Bible God's Word? I had some 10,000 sent to the city, and I think they're available 
I don't know whether they'll be given out here. I had instructed them, give to everybody. Let them go home and look at it themselves and read for themselves and make up their own minds. In this book, contradiction. The Quran tells us, Afalayat al Quran. al-Quran. He said, do they not consider the Quran with care? وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ إِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اِخْتِلَافًا كَسِيرًا Had it been from anyone other than Allah, you would have found in it many discrepancies, many contradictions. The Quran is not involved this evening. But this is what the Quran says, that if this is not the word of God, you will find in any book claiming to be from God, that book will be free from contradictions. Like for example, the example the brother gave, I repeat that. I said, look, it says in one of the books, Solomon had 4,000 stalls of horses. Another one says he had 40,000 stalls of horses. And 4 in 40 is only the difference of a zero. So you say, I said, you know, my cousins, the Jews, they didn't know the zero when they wrote the book. They didn't know. It's my Arab brothers who found it from my fathers in India and they shared it to the world, zero. The Jews didn't know. They wrote this in words. Four, F-O-U-R, four. In Hebrew, of course. Forty, F-O-R-T-Y, forty. I said, now who made the mistake? God or the writer? And they were not saved. We are told that they were not saved from mistakes. Mrs. Ellen G. White, you say she's a cultist, Mrs. Ellen G. White, the prophetess of the Seventh-day Adventist movement. In her Bible commentary, she says, she has no motives to lie. She believes in the Bible to be the inspired word of God. And yet she says, she says the Bible we, have re we read today is the work of many copyists who have in most instances done the work with marvelous accuracy. In most instances, she, they have done their work with marvelous accuracy. But copies have not been infallible. And God most, mo and God most evidently has not seen fit to preserve them altogether from error. God didn't see fit. In other words, this is, this is his business, God's business. If he wants to see fit, if he wants to do a thing, he does it. If he doesn't, he says, go to hell. That's your business. He said, God didn't see fit to preserve them from making errors. In transcribing, in the following pages of her commentary, Mrs. White testifies further, I saw that God had specially guarded the Bible. God had specially guarded the Bible. I'm asking for what? Yet, when copies of it were few, learned men had in some instances changed the words in the original manuscripts. They changed the words, thinking that they were making it plain, when in reality they were mystifying that which was plain, by causing it to lean to the established views which were governed by tradition, like the Jehovah's Witnesses. They have produced a translation called the New World Translation. The Orthodox, you don't accept that. Why don't you? Because they have their own leanings. According to their own ideas, they are changing the words. Same thing that the Protestants did. They were people who believed in Jesus as God. So they said, now, they changed the words. So we said, this is, has been going on from the very beginning. They boast about 24,000 manuscripts. Brother Swagat, you know, no two are identical. Your scholars say out of the 24,000 that you're boasting about, no two are identical. Then how do you come to know that this is the word of God and this is not out of the 24,000? On the very face of it, when you open the book, the Injil and the Torah you're talking about, it says Mark, um, Matthew begins, in your version, the King James Version, it says, the gospel according to St. Matthew, the gospel according to St. Mark, the gospel according to St. Luke, the gospel according to St. John. I am asking, what is this according, according, according? What is this according to? Why according to? I have got Brother Swagger's book. It says, you know, homosexuality, its cause and its cure by Jimmy Swagger or just Jimmy Swagger. It doesn't say according to Jimmy Swagger. Why this in the book of God?